Tradition has it that the story of Christ's birth was given to St. Luke by Our Lady herself, and that would make great sense. And one of the things we know about Our Lady from the Gospels is that she would always treasure these great events, these mysteries of God, and ponder them in her heart. And she teaches us just by that very action how important it is to meditate on the things of God and to think about them and let them live in our heart. It's funny, it took 1,200 years before the first nativity scene was ever depicted. It took so long, 1,200 years, 1,223 to be exact. And it took that little man who was only not even five foot tall, St. Francis of Assisi. That little man whose way was the way of the gospel, was the way of the heart, the way of love. It's funny, there are many religious orders in the history of the church, and many of them have their, their spiritual way. There's this way, there's the exercises of St. Ignatius, there's the the strict way of the Carthusians who are like hermits and fully enclosed. There's the Benedictines. There's so many ways. But there's one way that is the way of the heart. And that's the Franciscan way, the way of St. Francis of Assisi. He had such a love for Christ, such a burning love for Christ. And in 1223, he had just come back from the Holy Land where he had converted the Sultan. The sun, the hot desert had played havoc on his eyes, so his vision was suffering. He could still see at this stage, but they were causing him a lot of problems. And he came to this little town of Greccio, as many of you already know, and he'd had in his mind and heart to bring to our eyes what it was like for Christ to be born. No one had ever done this. And so he found a cave on a hill just outside the town, and he had it all set up. What he placed in the cave was straw, was a manger, like this little manger, was a real ox and a real donkey. That was it. That was the first nativity scene, nothing more. He had an altar set up in the cave and everything that was needed for the mass. And this is Christmas Eve. He got, went down to the town of Greccio. He gathered as many people as he could and word spread quickly and people started even coming from around the towns. He had them make torches and garlands and decorations, everything for this wonderful night. And as it got closer to the dead of night, to what we call midnight, they formed a great procession with all their torches and processed up the hill to the little cave singing hymns. And it seemed there were over a thousand present and it seemed that the whole hill was lit up by these torches and everybody's heart was lifted by the beautiful hymns and some even believe the angels were present. And when the people gazed in this cave and for the first time saw a nativity scene without the other figures, they were silent, they were in awe. They thought they were looking at Bethlehem because Christ was born in a cave. Stables were caves in Bethlehem, not lovely wooden structures as often is represented. And St. Francis by this stage was a deacon. And so the Mass began and it came time for the Gospel and in those days the Mass was usually sung from beginning to end. Nothing was said. And Francis intoned the Gospel and sang it with all his heart. And then he started to preach. And while he was preaching, the child Jesus appeared in the manger. But interestingly, he appeared still in a deep sleep, almost as if he was in a coma. He was pale, almost white. And St. Francis saw him and he was filled with joy. And he went over to the little manger and he picked up the child Jesus in his arms and he held him close and kissed him. And as he did, the child awoke and looked at Francis with eyes that seemed to have the stars in them, light came from them. And Francis wept with joy. And those who saw this were moved so deeply that words could not describe. 
And ever since then, the friars faithfully kept this Christmas by making a nativity scene. And over the years, it grew and grew and spread throughout the whole church and became just a normal part of our Christmas. But this event teaches us something. And I, I want you to see it, if you can, in your mind's eye and in your heart. Notice the child at first was still, silent, pale. Notice at Mass, the priest takes the bread. It's still, it's silent, it's pale. The priest speaks to the bread. This is my body. Just like Christ spoke so many times when he worked his miracles. He spoke to the storm, be still, be quiet, and instantly everything was still. He spoke at the beginning of creation, let there be light, and there was light. He spoke to the dead, the little girl, Talitha Kum, his friend Lazarus. Lazarus come forth, and they came back alive. The power of Christ's word. The priest speaks to the host, this is my body, to the chalice, this is the chalice of my blood. And it is. The priest breaks the host. Just as Christ broke the bread and the fish when he fed the 5,000, when he fed the 3,000, when he was at Emmaus with those disciples that went the other direction, thinking that Christ was dead, never to come back. And as he broke the bread in their presence, he disappeared. And they knew it was him risen. Then he distributes the host to the faithful. And so this leaves us with this question, with this moment. As Francis picked up the little baby, pale and still in a deep sleep, we receive Christ in a similar fashion. We can't see him. He's hidden. As little Jacinta said at Fatima, he is the hidden Jesus. We only see the externals of the bread. Still, pale. What do we do? Do we embrace him in our heart? Do we kiss him? Do we love him? Because this is called the great mystery of love. You know, there's a great song back in the old days. Ah, great mystery of love, at last I found you. The great opera singers used to sing it. This is it. The great mystery of love. How do we respond to this mystery of love? Do we get completely distracted? Give him no thought whatsoever? Do we ignore him? Do we disbelieve? It's only a piece of bread. It's only a symbol. Or do we love him? Because if we love him, and it doesn't matter how you could measure your love, because you can't really measure love. Love is a choice. It doesn't matter how good your love is. What matters is that you love him. Because when you love him, he awakens in you. And he gives you gifts, graces, blessings, mercy salvation, eternal life. But if you ignore him, if you think about everything else but him, if you reject him, he can give you nothing. He can give you nothing. Not because he doesn't want to, but because our hearts remain closed. You see, in our lives, brothers and sisters, all love must be a two-way road. We must love and be loved. How to destroy any relationship? Love someone and don't get love back. Goodbye, it's over. And it's exactly the same with our faith. He loves us, but he wants our love too. 
If it's the one thing we can give him, love. And it isn't an emotion. It's a choice. It's a decision. It's an opening up of ourselves to him and receiving him with everything that we are. May Our Lady, who loved her son like no one, help us to love him too. And that we may receive everything that he wants to give us, especially salvation and life forever in his glorious kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.